Hi, I'm Peter Kreitler. In anticipation of the debris field from the Fukushima nuclear disaster and tsunami hitting the beaches of California, I collected trash from a one quarter mile stretch of Santa Monica Beach over a 90 day period. A daily walk at the tide line offered a vast array of discarded objects that I took home, separated, and cataloged. My intention was to artistically photograph flotsam in order to demonstrate how our ignorance and laziness was contributing to the compromise of the ecosystems that sustain us all. I asked fine art photographer John Rife Williams to do what I could not do. The images he created for the exhibit, This Is Not Trash, are offered to help us all reflect on our individual responsibility to preserve creation for all generations. John, I want us to take a look at this image uh, for a particular reason. Metaphorically, it's the most important photograph in the exhibit. It's called Easter Island. If we look at the first tennis ball, and these were all found on the beach, the first tennis ball represents in the beginning. Whenever the created world began, it looked like this. It was perfect. And as it's beginning to degrade, we're about here at 2014. The Earth is beginning to come apart at the seams. And if it continues on the pattern we're on and it seems to be accelerating, how long is it going to be before we see the Earth not able to sustain its population? That's the trajectory we're on. That's what happened to Easter Island. When you photograph this, tell me how you did it. Basically, the, the objects are photographed in the same place, in the same physical place, the distance between the camera and the objects was the same because I felt it was important that as we went from a perfect universe to, to the end of time that you could see the, the shape change and you could also see that the, that the size of the earth changed and that more it shrunk and more of the surround became apparent in the image. Perfect, and that's why Easter Island is important to this exhibit, because every piece of trash here, everything that was found, represents what humanity is doing to our fragile island home, Mother Earth. The photograph behind me is called Flotsam and Jetsam. It is the one photograph in the collection that really reflects the fact of the junk in our ocean. There are over 50 different pieces in this one image. And I was standing looking at it, and a gentleman came up to me and he said, you know, this is really trash, but you've turned it into art. And I said to him, well, you know, it really isn't trash. That's the name of the show, No Es Basura. This is not trash. Because every piece was designed by somebody who was an artist whether it be a plastic bottle or a golf ball or whatever, there was someone who paid a lot of money for it and hired people to turn it into a piece of art. And now, because of our disregard for the environment, for our forgetfulness, for our um, absolute indifference to what is happening to our planet, it becomes trash. And so John and I collaboratively turned it back into art because from there we can realize that how important this is and that everything has intrinsic value, regardless of what it is and what we've done to it. So when you look at these images, remember that we can make a difference because 
our human behavior is what turned treasure into trash. Wes, this image kind of transformed this project for me immediately. Every morning I go to the beach about 6.30, the sun gets up 6.30, 7 o'clock, and it comes from the east, and it hits the beach and it lights the beach a certain way. Every day I pick up plastic stuff, and once in a while there'd be a straw or a bottle, pretty mundane. And one morning I saw a glint in the seaweed, it was in the kelp, all kind of tangled up, and I, I didn't know what it was. And I go up, and there I see the gold part. It was just reflecting in the sun. And I pulled it out, and I said, oh my gosh, this is a camera that I used in the 60s. And I, I kind of get goosebumps talking about it now, because I, I took it home. I didn't even show it to Katie right away. I just said, this, is, this makes the show. This starts the whole thing, the whole process here. And so I looked at it, and to me, it represented for me my history of photography. Um, I started with, uh, in 1963, with a Kodak camera that my dad gave me to use uh, when I went to India. And this camera was developed in 1963. That's when the Instamatics began. And so this picture is so emblematic for the show because it tells us that photography is about so many different things. It's about a kind of perfection that we see in John Williams' photographs, the prints, the skill with which those pictures, the, the objects, the found objects are lighted. But this particular picture tells us so much about what is interesting of photography itself because photography records decay in a way that no other medium can record. And here we have an emblem of the decay of the very instrument that records decay. So this picture was probably used to photograph family groups, vacations, uh, things that people wanted to remember in the form of color snapshots that would have been sent off to the one hour Photoshop and, and then sent off long before you could send pictures by email digitally. People had to get prints from the one hour photo place and then write on the back when it was made and who was there and what you were doing. Sure. Uh, and those photographs then went into somebody's family album and the family album was retained for 40 or 50 or 60 years, as they used to say when the dog died and the kids went, uh, were off to college. Uh, the family album, uh, the family album became a history of growth, birth, growth, and aging. Sure. And this picture I just find so compelling because the process of the camera itself decaying in the way that we see here is very rarely ever shown. And I'm very impressed by the show. I, I've, I'm very moved by it. I mean, and, and this image in particular struck me just as I walked in, because it's it plays on irony, because it's about memory and it's about preservation and it's about images and. One's one, one, as I'm staring at it now, I'm wondering what are the memories in this camera? What were the images that were taken by its owner? So uh, I find it incredibly powerful. And also aesthetically, I love the, the black, the rich blacks, and I love the rust. And I just think it's a beautifully simple, powerful statement of what this project is about. Reality and the fiction of a photograph. And I'm gonna start with this little item. It's a fisherman's uh, float, and uh, it's plastic, it's bright red. And I'd like, John, John, you can probably answer these questions. How did, how did you light, how did, what kind of light did you use to get the interesting colors? Because we can see that this is a bright white. This is, but in the picture, you've got, it's kind of blue, and the background is kind of blue. I pretended as if I was a fish. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and um, basically, I wanted to, the perception in this photograph to be of, of that, of, of what a fish would see if it was looking up and looking for food, looking for something to eat. So this photograph is actually an anomaly in the show in that I made it outside. I used a, a large mirror on an angle, and I used a hose, and I uh, ran water down a mirror, 
and basically use natural light. And you can see trails of exposure, of, of, of the long exposure during this. And um, so the, the, the pictures, not only this picture, but many of the other pictures in this exhibition look so simple. They look like they were preordained, that, that there was no, pre, uh, no forethought that necessarily went into uh, creating what we see. And yet you've just told us that there were a lot of decisions that had to be made. How was the light to get on these things? Why would you use a mirror? Why would you take it outside rather than doing it inside? These are all choices that the photographer, let's call him the artist photographer, has to make in order to, to create fiction out of things that are real. And I'm going to now point to the most interesting way in which photography creates its own fiction. And that has to do with the size. Look at the difference between the size of the real thing and the picture. It's enlarged. It's enlarged greatly, as are all of the elements of this. And so one of the, one of the aspects of photography that's so interesting is that it can change the scale of what it is you're seeing. This is of styrofoam. I brought it to John in a pile. He put it together like this, and John, what is this? This is an iceberg. This, this, all the photographs in this room I made within six square feet in my living room. So this photograph is made really in my head, as most images are. And this was done on a tabletop with glass and lights and all kinds of glass and Every photograph began with one single light source and was built up from there, dependent upon letting the image take me wherever it needed to go. My name is Craig Perkins, and formerly I was the Director of Environmental and Public Works Management for the City of Santa Monica. And one of the things that I was responsible for was cleaning the beach every day. Now, what this exhibit shows us very clearly is that even if you clean the beach every day, there's a lot of stuff that you don't want on the beach that ends up there. Now, in Santa Monica, we do a very good job trying to collect all of the trash and the debris from the storm drains, trying to keep the beaches clean, but there's so much that gets thrown into the streets, gets carried into the gutters and the storm drains every day, that it's almost impossible to keep up with it. What this exhibit shows is that those items of trash can, in the right context, be made to look very beautiful. But at the same time, it tells us that these items should not be ending up on our beaches and in our oceans. The, the ocean is not the world's garbage can. And these items that don't end up on our beaches very likely end up circling and cycling either in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, at the bottom of the ocean, being eaten by marine animals, getting into the food chain, killing and destroying the ecosystem. What we need to really think about is why we need to use these products. Styrofoam, polystyrene, there's no reason that this should be used for disposable containers. Many cities have banned them. More cities need to do that. There are other very bad uh, consequences from the items that we discard every day. We need to think very wisely about how we make our choices to purchase items, to products, what we do with those items after we use them. Disposable is never really disposable. It ends up somewhere, and we have to deal with it. We either deal with it today or our children are going to deal with it down the road. So I'm very happy that, that this exhibit shows what uh, happens to our choices as members of our society, members of our community, and I hope that it illustrates how we need to be more responsible and better stewards of the earth we share. So the picture behind us is, uh, uh, is astonishing because it, 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 it's an emblem 
of how magical photography is because one of the giant misunderstandings about the art of photography is that somehow it's an easier art than the other arts. Mm -hmm. And when the camera pans around this room, the pictures themselves look so finished and so permanent and so eternal and so preordained that we are slightly confused about what is reality and what is fiction in what it is we're looking at. So um, I'd, like to, I'd like to take our dialogue in the direction of what is photography and how, um, how can we better understand the art of photography through the pictures that are on view here that all have one common thread and that common thread is that they were, everything here was found in a particular place but more interestingly to me is that what you said about the origins of all of these objects, which is that they were designed, they were made, that each of these things is in its own way a designed object. Absolutely. It's a, it's Absolutely. a little artifact. Absolutely. And this, so I'm, that's going to lead me to point one about what is photography. And, that, and, and point one about photography is that, um, that art begets art that the way art comes into existence is typically to start with another work of art. And so this, uh, the inspiration for this project is twofold. First of all, it's your interest in nature and the environment. Right. But second of all, it's how things that were found on the beach, which were uniformly objects of some design and therefore small works of art could be transformed into big works of art through photography. And I think the picture here represents that. That's the first object that I took to John. And I have tried to photograph that bottle and I have several photographs of it. The object itself is so interesting because whoever twisted this piece of plastic was a strong person. It tells you about the hands of the person who last held it, who held it just before you did. Right. Uh, and they twisted this thing into a grotesque shape. When I held a single light to this photograph, it transilluminated and this whole bottom half became a sphere. It became a globe to me. It became a, sort of the sense of earth. And for me, metaphorically, that's what it became. This, long sweep reminds me of my own scarf and it reminds me of a pirouette and a dancer and a, it, it, to me it was more like it was it seemed to me more reminiscent of ballet to me than uh, than anything and a lot of this photograph was set up with this little camera but most of it was made during the exposure itself where I'm waving lights around and I'm and all these little highlights and all these colors in here are things that I threw into the photograph as I was making it. And I didn't know what I was getting until it was done. And I think in photography for me, that's one of the things I like to try and do is to throw myself into a moving train and end up in a place off the map in one piece and in a place where I've discovered something for myself. And hopefully it's, it's opened up a world for you and created a universe that goes beyond the mere object in this, this water bottle. Hi, I'm Alexandra Paul, a, a longtime friend of Peter Kreitler's, um, and also his co-host on the television show Earth Talk Today. Um, this is called Berlin Wall. I love this piece because um, this depicts cigarettes and Peter says the reason he calls it Berlin Wall is because we have to knock this down. 5.6 trillion cigarettes are manufactured yearly and most of them get thrown on the ground. And in most cities when they're thrown on the ground they end up going through the drains and to the beach, into the ocean, and they end up on the beaches eventually. These cigarettes could have been smoked in other countries and, and ended up on Los Angeles beaches. It means a lot to me because I've done a lot of beach pickups and um, experienced that there are so many cigarettes on, on the beaches that are washed up. 
which are especially, especially da dangerous for fish and birds because they eat the filters and they're made of incredible poisons and all this stuff and they're terrible for them. Also, it's unsightly. When I, I'm an actress and I was on the television series Baywatch and we were shooting on the beach every day for, ye for five years I shot that show and we encountered so many problems with cigarettes on the beach. a regular form and repeating it was a challenge in this photograph. I found this one of the, the most delightful, fun experiences in the entire show. I set this photograph up and then I took a can of air. After I had it arranged and I thought it was just perfect, I used chopsticks to arrange these, these objects just exactly where I wanted. I placed them and I was actually watching through the back of the camera to see where they were falling. Then I took a can of air and I knocked them out of place. And you can see that this is twisted. I wanted, I wanted a sense that this was more of a river, that there was a, there was a flow through this piece that, that I couldn't get by just making it rectilinear, just by having everything line up. So knocking it out, it was deliberately knocked out to, to make it exciting, to make it dynamic for myself, and to take me to a place that I had never been before. So I hope it does that for you. Walking along the beach with my head down, I was always ready for a surprise. One day it was a big tire. To find a tire on the beach, my goodness. I lifted it out of the sand that was half buried and carried it home, and we photographed it. One day I'd find children's toys and plastics, bottle, pieces. And then all of a sudden, I bent over and I found this little bottle, little tiny bottle with a a message in it. I never found a bottle with a message in it my entire life. And I took it home and put it on my desk and let it sit there for a while. And about a week later, I took the message out all by myself and looked at it. I read it and I put it back in the bottle. I didn't even tell my wife, Katie, what it said because it was so powerful. It touched me deeply. It was to Angel from Daddy. And the letter we have now reproduced and shown in the show. And here's the bottle. And for me, every one of us should be thinking about what is the message we're going to put in the bottle and leave for our children and grandchildren? What is it going to say? For me, it might be something like every action I take, every decision I make has an environmental consequence. The choices we make do matter. So we want to put something in the bottle for our children to remember. So take a moment. When you look at this, remember that it was a very special note written by a dad to a child that has apparently passed away. One day I'm going to put a note in a bottle. I'm going to throw it into the ocean. And we'll see where it ends up. One straw. However, in the United States every day, we make 125 busloads of plastic straws. I find more of these than anything other than bottle caps on the beach. What if we turned this into a beautiful art piece that would remind us that perhaps it is important to keep it as art, but not as trash? <laughs>